What is up guys? My name is Lex. Today is May 20th. It's a Saturday. It's my final day out here in Los Angeles, California. Yesterday, Friday, I took the complete day off. I just laid in bed. I rested because I was completely exhausted from the day before when I played on Hustler Casino Live. It was super fun, but I was really nervous. I was anxious. I was stressed before playing that game because it was the biggest game I'd ever played on the biggest stage. It meant a lot. I wanted everything to go perfectly and I feel like it kind of did. I mean, my goals going into that Hustler Casino Live session was to have fun, create relationships, be entertaining, play some big pots, win some money. And I feel like it all just kind of worked you know exactly how I wanted it to go. I was able to communicate with people, talk to people, laugh, meet new people, play some big pots, create some action. Um, it was great. I ended up winning like almost $8,000 on the live stream and uh, it was really, really fun. But yesterday I took the day off. Today's my final day out here. My flight doesn't leave tonight until 11.30 p.m. So I have like 11 hours to kill today. So I'm gonna do some things. I'm gonna go to the beach and uh, then we're gonna go play some Hustler 5.5 or 5.10. We're gonna fly back to Florida, I'm gonna get my dog, and I'm gonna bring that all for a video for you guys. Hope you enjoy it, let's get started. So I actually ended up having to make a stop here at Hollywood Park Casino because Tuesday, the very first day that I was here, I played that 51020 game, which I made a video of, I had like $9,000 on me and I just didn't want to walk through the parking lot and take it back to my hotel at like 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. So I decided just to leave it here in a player's bank so I had to pick that up today. And uh, now we're going to head to the beach. Killing some time before my flight this evening, I head to a new beach here in Los Angeles, El Segundo Beach. It was okay. June gloom came a little bit early here in Los Angeles. It's pretty gloomy until around 2 or 3 p.m. I decided to go on a run by the beach as well. And then I walked back and finally made my way to Hustler Casino, where I sat down with a 510 game. I bought in for $1,500, which is the max and we start playing some poker hands. Right off the bat, we get dealt in a nice big pocket pair. Red Kings, there's a limp for $10. I may get 50 here in the small blind. I get one caller, so heads up out of position to an A-side board. Not my favorite, but I can still get called by worse hands. I see bet small. Before I get the chips in the middle, he folds and we win the first pot. My flight takes off in about five hours to head back to Florida. I got to return my rental car, get in the shuttle to the airport, go through security. So I got about three hours left to play here. Let's make something happen. And something happens in this hand. Jack 10 offsuit. There's a call in the cutoff. I ISO raise on the button to $50. Straddle calls 50 and cutoff limp calls. So now we're three ways to a very dry flop of Jack six deuce rainbow. I flop top pair. Decent kicker, when the action checks to me, I bet $70, straddle folds, and the cutoff makes to call. Little bit of background information on this cutoff player. He had been playing fairly timid the entire session. He just won a big pot and now has over $3,000. It doesn't look like he normally plays this deep. It looks like he wants to lock up the win. He was talking about going home in the next orbit, so I don't think he's trying to get too out of line here. So when he calls on the flop, I think he could have a better jack than me, but when the 10 of hearts comes on the turn, giving me top two pair, I'm feeling really good about my hand. So I continue to bet now for $125, hoping he's got king jack, queen jack, jack nine. But then to my surprise, my opponent min check raises me here out of position to 300 bucks. And immediately I know I'm beat. I look back at my hand though, and I do have the Jack of Hearts, which is an interesting card to have. Given the fact that I have the Jack of Hearts, I block him from having Jack X of Hearts. I think a lot of the time here, he's gonna have a set like pocket deuces or pocket sixes. I don't think my top two pair is good. It's possible he could have the same hand, Jack 10 offsuit as well. So if I think he has a set, I could fold my hand, but I'm getting such a good price here to call and try to boat up. If he has a set and I hit a full house with a 10 or a jack, I will get the full double up here. It's also possible we could be chopping. So I decided to call for $300 more. Also, if a heart comes off on the river here, I could maybe turn my hand into a bluff. Well, the four of hearts comes out. We do not improve to a full house and my opponent bets $400. And now my decision is, should I hero fold top two pair? Should I call or 
Should I bluff? I feel like calling is the worst option because, like I said before, I'm almost positive he has a set. I feel like folding would be fine as well. With that said, I actually think turning my hand into a bluff could be the best situation here. I put him on a set. I do think he'll hero fold a set sometimes, putting me on a backdoor flush. He's about to go home. He has a huge profit on the day. He probably doesn't want to lose it all. So I decided to go for it, turning my hand into a bluff. Top two pair, I'm all in for $1,600 more. This is somewhat of an advanced play when you have a very good hand like top two pair and you realize that your hand is no good so you have to turn it into a bluff. I wouldn't recommend doing this at these stakes. A lot of the time people are just going to call with sets or two pairs and you're going to lose. But in this situation, I feel pretty confident he does not have a flush. I don't think he's ever check min raising on the turn with a flush draw. Like I said before, I have the jack of hearts. So I block him from having jack X of hearts for top pair, backdoor flush. So if he doesn't have a flush, I put him on two pair or a set. I do think he'll hero fold a set sometimes to me, given the fact that he wants to go home a winner. He was playing pretty timid and pretty scared the entire session, trying to put max pressure on him, and he does show his hand. He shows six of clubs, six of diamonds. My heart rate starts to elevate here where I know, okay, I am bluffing, we're hoping to get him off a set, and he goes into the tank for a very long time. He asks for a full count. He's talking back and forth. I don't know if I can fold. I don't know if I can call. Man, it's such a big bet. You must have a flush. Maybe you have pocket jacks. Maybe you have aces. Are you bluffing? I don't think you're bluffing. And eventually, after three minutes of thinking, he finally comes up with a decision. Basically. Jack of hearts. I know. That's, I know you have one jack, one heart. I don't think uh, you have a jack. Oh, you nice said, bet. You nice said jack of hearts. Yeah, I thought you had two jack of hearts. That was what yeah. I'm thinking. Man, he made me wait there in the tank for over three minutes. I was trying not to give anything away, trying to keep my heart rate under control. This is one of those plays where if it works, you look like a genius, and if it doesn't work, you look like a punter. So I'm glad it worked this time. We take down a decent pot, getting our opponent to fold a set on the river. We fold for a while, and then I get dealt in the Robbie hand. Jack of clubs, four of hearts. I got to play this one here at Hustler. I raised a 50, get one caller. I flop bottom pair. I bet out $50 he folds we got to show it just for the lols and move on to the next hand this next hand i face kind of an interesting dilemma here on the river i call with pocket threes for ten dollars it's a limp pot five ways and i flop a set on three four six all diamonds it's a super wet and connected board but in this lineup i'm just gonna bet and if someone raises me they'll basically be telling me they have a better hand if they call, I'll put them on a flush draw or straight draw. So I make it $25, folds to the button, who's an older recreational player, and she just calls 25 Turn card king of clubs, think it's a great card for me. She could have king x of diamonds. She could have a straight draw or the ace of diamonds as well. So I continue for $55, and she calls again. River card seven of spades, not my favorite, brings in a five for a straight I'm about to bet small here until she bets out a turn. She makes it $100 before I've even acted. I'm gonna win. Exactly. Then that's why you don't do anything, yes. yeah. 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 So if you do yeah, that, that's like, like, why I'm not Yes, yes. But if you don't do anything, yes. Yeah, either didn't get a action or I lost big hands with him. Yeah, I was like, never mind. I'll never complain again. So if I check Hunter's stance? No. 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 Can you tell me that or no? You can't. Uh, okay. If you check. So she bet out a turn. If I yeah, check 100 turn. stands or no? Uh, for this one, I'm not sure I asked for common. Because if it, it she puts all it in, it has to stay. It doesn't stay. No, if all in stay, but the, the bet, I'm not sure. You want to get a floor room? Yeah. Well, you tell I'm me what sure. it is. I, I don't really know what happens though. So. We can ask the floor, but it doesn't stay. Okay. If you check, she's not forced to bet 100. Okay. A very weird situation where the rules here in Los Angeles are that if an opponent bets out of turn, that bet doesn't stand if I check. Now in Florida, if opponent bets out of turn and I check, that bet stands. So what my plan was, was to check, have her $100 bet stand and just call. But now I'm thinking that potentially she could just have a really big monster 
and she doesn't want me to check. Or maybe this is some kind of a weird reverse angle where she's trying to scare me into checking. So she bets out a turn knowing that the bet doesn't stand. If I check, I have no idea what to do here, but I decide to just bet small. I decide to change the action. I just make it $40 and she snap calls. I show the pocket threes and she shows king seven for top two pair. Kind of a weird situation. I don't think she was trying to angle me. Maybe she just got excited that she hit two pair. Maybe I should have bet a hundred. Maybe I should have checked. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. We now get into the last hand of the night. Button opens up to 40. I three bet king eight of diamonds and the big blind to 150. And he makes the call fairly loose and light three bet here out of position pre-flop. But I want to get in there. I want to play some pots versus the button open. I can three bet a little bit wider. Flop comes down nine, deuce, deuce, one diamond. I bet $100 and he makes the call. Turn is a jack, doesn't give me any extra equity. No flush draws, no straight draws, no pairs. I could give up here, but I think a lot of the time he's gonna have middling small pocket pairs like pocket threes through pocket eights, some ace high, king high floats. I wanna continue to barrel to get those hands to fold. So I make it $260 and I get very quickly snap called by the button. In game, I have to say I was a little bit surprised that he snap called that larger bet on the turn. Going to the river, which pairs the board again, it's another jack. I really consider going for a big triple barrel bluff here. I start thinking back on the turn play he called very quickly. Would he call this quickly with a strong hand like trip deuces, pocket nines, a jack? Wouldn't he think about his decision a little bit longer when he snap calls? Makes me feel like he's a little bit weak. I consider betting big five, six, seven hundred dollars trying to get him off a pocket pair. However, when the board pairs on the river, I feel like he's just going to call with a nine. It didn't change anything at all. So I decide to slow down, give up and check. He instantly checks back. I show king high and he shows ace three offsuit. We kind of got owned here. He made a loose call pre-flop. A fairly standard call on the flop, a very loose call on the turn, and he ends up taking this one down with ace three, which ends up being our last hand of the night. Somewhat of a boring session, not too many big pots. We got into that one big hand where we turned two pair into a bluff and got a set to fold. My flight is about to take off in about two hours. I gotta get out of here. I gotta go to the airport. I end up racking up my chips, heading to the cage, and cashing out for the night. All right, finally made it back to Florida, taking little Rogue on a walk. It's a beautiful evening. feels good to be back in the humidity, but to end this video, I'm just gonna kind of talk to the camera. I got some things I wanna discuss. The first thing is that since like February of 2021, I've been traveling for this poker vlog. I've been going to Texas, uh, Dallas, Austin, San Antonio, went to Vegas multiple times, LA, Washington DC, some other places. And every single time I flew, I would fly the cheapest airline because, you know, that's how I am. I'm pretty cheap. So I always would fly Spirit to Vegas. I would fly Spirit to Dallas. I'd fly Spirit to Austin, fly Spirit to Washington, D.C. And I decided, you know, I'm going to L.A. I'm playing a game, $20,000 buy-in. When I go to L.A. this time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upgrade. So I decided to fly Delta for the first time in years uh, out to L.A. And it was a huge difference. I mean... I sat down on the seat, I'm like, oh, this is actually what a comfortable seat is supposed to feel like. Um, no ratchet people on the flight. So that was a big difference. Some of you, I'm sure in the comments, agree with me that uh, Spirit's pretty crazy and pretty bad, but it's a three hour flight to Texas, it's a four hour flight to Vegas. I just suck it up to save, you know, two or 300 bucks. Uh, it does add up. Another thing that I haven't really mentioned or talked too much about is like my five or 10 year poker goals um, for myself. Obviously, if you guys have been watching my channel, you see that I try to push myself and I try to take shots and I try to play bigger games. When I first started this channel, 
two and a half years ago, I was mostly a 2-5 player who started playing 5-10. And then over the last two and a half years, I've kind of showcased all my big shot takes in poker. I started playing 5-10 more regularly, 5-10-25, started playing 10-25, showed those videos, 10-20 out of the Bellagio, 10-20 in Vegas, uh, the win, 25-50, uh, all those games um, I've kind of showcased, like trying to push myself to be a better poker player, play bigger games, and ultimately that is my goal, is to be able to get to the level where I can play these huge live stream games on my own money. My goal is to one day be able to buy in for $100,000 and play 100, 200 at the Hustler or the Lodge. I do know that that process is probably gonna be a lot slower than maybe other vloggers. Now, I used to watch, and I still do watch, Rampage, Mariano, Brad, and Andrew, like the top four vloggers, and I find it incredible that all four of them have just skyrocketed up to like the highest level in poker. You got Rampage winning like a million dollars in a tournament, Mariano winning millions of dollars on high stakes cash games. Brad and Andrew are playing nosebleed 100, 200, 30K buy ins as well. It's pretty crazy that they went from playing 2 5, 5 10 just a couple of years ago to now playing huge, you know, nosebleeds, high stakes games. And that is my goal in the next five years is to get to that point. I want to be able to get to the point where I can sit down, I can play 100, 200, 400, and, uh, That'd be pretty fun. I think that process is gonna be a little bit slower, but I definitely think it's possible. And I think it's possible, well, I know it's possible, really because of you guys who are watching my videos. So all, you know, turning this all around to why I kind of discussed this is I wanna say thank you to all you guys who have been watching my videos the past two years, because one, it's created a fun, you know, creative outlet for me and be able to make new videos and meet new people and friends, but really, I wouldn't have these opportunities if it wasn't for my YouTube channel. I would not be able to call up at the lodge and say, hey, wanna, I want to come play. Sure, come play here. Texas Card House. Yeah, come on, come play the live stream. Hustler. I don't think I would ever get into Hustler if it wasn't for my poker vlog. So the fact that I have 50,000 people watching every single week um, is pretty cool. And it's, I'm very thankful for you guys. And, you know, just kind of wrapping up this video is just kind of saying thank you for watching, thank you for liking, subscribing, being there for two and a half years. I'm hoping the next five years will be fun. I want to showcase all the biggest wins, all the biggest losses, the biggest shot takes, and maybe five years from now I'll be playing, you know, the third annual or fourth annual million dollar cash game on Hustler. How cool would that be? That's the goal. Uh, I don't know, I've been rambling for a little bit now. Hope you guys enjoy these LA videos. Up next, I'll be back here in Florida making some videos here and then Vegas for the World Series of Poker. But that is it for this one. I'm gonna edit some videos. I'm gonna play a little poker here, hang out with my dog, work out, get back to normal life back here in Florida. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Until next time, I'll see ya.